There is surprisingly not a lot of info available on the internet on how to get even with your neighbors. We're gonna end that right now. Hello and welcome back to Gears and Tech. Today we're going to touch on a bit of a sensitive topic. So before we get too far into this, this is a real situation that really happened to me and to people around me. I'm gonna protect the identities of the individuals involved by uh, using an alias name for them. At least I think it's an alias name, but uh, please don't cause any harm or discomfort to the individuals that we're going to talk about. Uh, this story does have a happy ending, so it's okay. Now that the disclaimer's out of the way, let me fill you in on a scenario, and then we'll tell you our top ways to deal with an unruly neighbor in a perfectly legal way. Or maybe a questionably legal way, I'm not sure. We'll decide, we'll rank them, how legal they are as we do them. So here's the deal, you're a regular car guy. You have buddies over, you enjoy cars, you tinker in the garage in the evenings and the nights, you have friends that come, they may have loud exhaust, loud stereos, and they may be a little bit of a nuisance to those around you, but you do your best to be respectful. Despite all that, you still have that one neighbor who just is, it is a Karen through and through that just drives you wild. And every chance they get, they're calling the cops, they're calling the fire department, they're calling bylaw, and just making your life generally unpleasant. Before we get too far into this video, don't forget to subscribe to the channel down below. If you've seen some of our content already and have not subscribed, we want you to join our community. Smash that like button, hit subscribe, and let's get back to the video. Well, that happened to us. We have a property that I always refer to as the nicest house in the trailer park. And that's because we are literally in a community that is zoned for trailers, mobile homes. So it should give you an idea of kind of the demographic of people that are living around that area. This is not a racial thing. This is not a, this is not me being judgmental in any way, but every once in a while you get that one person who just thinks they're so much better than everybody else. That was the case in our community and our neighbor. Now, we've owned this house for over 20 years. We've been there for a long time, way before this neighbor has. However, at one point, my family and I decided that it would be better for us to move to a different house, so we began renting out our house. Now, we did have uh, what is known as an illegal suite. That means we were renting the basement and the upstairs separately. My neighbor um, wasn't very happy with that, so he called bylaw, and bylaw said, hey, you can't have uh, two separate people living in the house. Fine, I understand that, we accept that, and we kicked out the people in the basement and then began renting the house out as an entire house. At some point, though, the neighbor started taking pictures of the tenants that were renting that house and posting them on Facebook. And they were posting them in a closed group, which I was also part of this closed group. And his post was something like, uh, these people are really weird because they were lying out sun tanning in the yard and he's posting a picture of it. And it turned out that it was the tenant's daughter who was underage, and this guy's totally being a creeper. I called him out in the message, and I'm like, you know, this is really disgusting that you're posting pictures of a minor on here. At some point, he sends me a message. Uh, now, this was a couple years ago, and he says, hey, do you own this house? And I replied back and said, that's a really weird question, but can I ask what this is about? And then, nothing. Nothing at all for three months. And then all of a sudden I get this weird message that says, 
for F's sake, get over to that house now or I'm calling bylaw. The upstairs tenant isn't home, dog's barking, it's head off, and the patio door is open. If you've got a problem with a neighbor and a barking dog, go talk to the neighbor yourself. Why are you creeping out some guy on Facebook? So I did what any respecting person would do, and I said, first I'm hearing about it, I'll send them a text. But the next time you start with a message like this, I'll be the one calling bylaw. If you want to keep this civil, then let's do that. Well, obviously he didn't like that because he proceeded to call uh, animal control about abused dogs. He proceeded to call the fire department saying that um, he thought he could smell gas coming from our house and that they needed to come and shut it off. He proceeded to call the police about um, the tenant who was having some friends over and it was like nine o'clock in the afternoon. And then later on, my children moved into the house and while my children lived there, I was using the garage to film a bunch of videos, which you've probably seen some of those. I was live streaming from the garage and he'd call the cops because we were revving engines and he was calling the cops for just all this really stupid stuff. And that's when I turned to the internet to look for ways to get even with a bad neighbor. So this is where my list comes in because I got some really great ideas for you. If you've got a neighbor like this that's just a little bit nosy and just not minding their own business, I got some really great ideas for you. The first thing that you can do, I have some old routers around my house, like Wi-Fi routers. And the ones that I have, they have two channels, 2.4G and 5G. And I'm not using those routers. So what we did, we, you can plug a router in. So he's my neighbor, right? So obviously he'll see my Wi-Fi signal. So I went into the settings of, of my spare router and changed the 2.4G to say Kevin is a snitch. And that's what the Wi-Fi broadcasted name is. And then the, for the 5G, I put and snitches get dot, dot, dot. Because that's fun, right? You know, it's, it's harmless. And I'm sure at some point he would have been scanning for Wi-Fi to connect to and he'd be like, what? Kevin was a snitch, what? And then, you know, that'd be really exciting. That'd be fun. So you could do something like that. Something else that, that we knew is that we share a side yard, right? Our side yards are connected and they like to have friends over in the evenings and have a fire, nice, quiet, comfy fire. Well, I'm not sure what kind of music Kevin likes, but I thought it would be fun to provide some some ambient music for them to enjoy their fire with. So we just plugged in a little clock radio and you could put a little timer on it so that it turns on at certain times and turns off at certain times. Well, generally noise bylaws come into place around 10 o'clock at night. So as long as you shut the noise down by 10, you're okay. So creeping my buddy Kevin's Facebook page, I've decided he's like an 80s rocker kind of guy. So what do 80s rockers hate? Well, they probably don't like pop music. They probably don't enjoy country music much, but I wasn't sure which one he liked. So we just gave him a couple of different um, collections to play and you just have a, your timer, turn the clock radio on, and if you wanted to you know, put it right by the corner where they have their fires and turn it to max volume, I mean, you know, that's the neighborly thing to do, right? Is to help them out, to set the mood. They probably didn't think about having music playing. So you can have some fun music playing from within your yard. And as long as it shuts off sometime around 10 o'clock, that's okay. Something else that was a bit of a concern for me was that somebody threw some, I, I don't want to say that it was poisoned, but somebody put some water in our side yard in between our houses, which um, made the dog really sick. And I don't want to accuse anyone of anything, but I suspect that they were trying to poison the dog. So I was a little concerned about the safety of the animals at the house. And so one of the things that I wanted to do was to make sure that we could see what was going on. So we set up some cameras at the side of the house that look over that side of the fence. But to make sure that we got some really good light, I also put a motion activated floodlight. Now I happen to know that the one window at the back of the house, right by my garage, is my buddy Kevin's bedroom window. So I put a floodlight on my garage that can reach up over the fence and light up, you know, you wanna light up your yard and if some of that light maybe ends up being directed straight at their bedroom window, 
And if the motion sensor is adjusted maybe a little bit aggressively so that even if the wind rustles the tree branches just a little bit, that the light turns on. And so that light, I mean, it cycles on and off most of the night when it gets dark out. And, you know, it's all in, in for the interest of safety, right? Because we don't want the dog to get poisoned. And, you know, maybe it's nice of me to light up part of his yard and his bedroom window in the middle of the night too. Um, so that's always a fun one. The other thing is one of my daughter's roommates uh, practices drums. And so his drum room was actually the room right in the corner closest to my buddy Kevin's house. And so, you know, when you're in a heated drumming session, you might get a little bit warm. So what do you do when you're warm? You open a window. So I encouraged that roommate to make sure that they open the window every time that they're having a jam session with the drums, just to make sure that they don't, you know, overheat. Um, a side effect of that obviously would be that the drumming sounds might carry outside the window a little bit. And, and you know, maybe the neighbors appreciate hearing a, an hour long drum session, you know, as I'm sure most people would. But something else that's really the icing on the cake is to fight fire with fire. You know, we had talked about how my buddy liked to take pictures of miners in their private yards and um, post those on the internet. So one day I had an opportunity where my buddy Kevin was in his front yard and I happened to be at the house and I thought, you know, it'd be really fun is just stand here creepily. So I stood in that window staring at them and then I was like, what could make this really turn up a little bit higher? And so what I did was pulled out my cell phone. I just held my cell phone out and videoed them and stood there creepily until they noticed that I was there. And then when they noticed I was there, it was really fun because I didn't flinch at all. Um, his girlfriend actually noticed first, then she kind of disappeared, and then I could see her like peeking around the corner. Then she said something to my buddy, Kevin, and he turns and looks over his shoulder and sees that I'm standing there. Again, I didn't flinch. I just sat there holding that phone, staring at them, and they uh, eventually went in the house, and, and that was that. So that was really fun. I had a lot of fun that day. If you do everything just right and you, you pile this all on, you know, just this kind of passive aggressive stuff, stuff that you can do legally. It's okay to have sound blowing from your side of the yard during reasonable times of the day. It's okay to have um, lights for security. And if they call the cops and say, uh, hey, this guy's shining a light in my yard, well, then you can tell them about how your dog was poisoned and you want to, you know, you've set up cameras and you want to make sure that you're lighting the area so that you can keep an eye on things. That's your right as a homeowner to protect your property and to know what's going on around your property. And if you get a little bit of light that leaks out over into the neighbor's yard, I mean, you do the best you can, but what can you really do, right? If you do everything just right, a miracle happens. That's right. That same year, within about a month of this open warfare, they put their house for sale. And uh, I happened to actually know the realtor. So I called him and I said, hey, can you make sure this house sells quick, please? Do everything you can to make sure this house sells. Well, lucky for us, it did sell. And we've got new neighbors. And my buddy Kevin's gone, bothering somebody else. Hopefully he's moved to a neighborhood that more suits who he thinks he is, rather than being stuck in trailer trash and mingling with all these commoners. The moral of the story is, uh, bad neighbors exist. And they're gonna do stuff like that all the time. They're gonna call, that's what they do. They call the fire department, they call the police, they call that stuff. So there's only so many certain things you can do. You don't wanna go, like some people had ideas like, well, yeah, go slash their tires. Well, you can't, as soon as you start slashing tires, that's a criminal offense and you'll get in trouble for it. But there are things that you can do. You can set up cameras and start monitoring what's going on. You can set up floodlights. Setting up your Wi-Fi to call them out is always a fun thing because who can, who can really say anything about that? You know, they can be bothered by it, but at least you're letting them know that you know. And then stuff like playing music loud at right until 10 o'clock and then shutting it off. They can call the cops. Cops will come, you'll be like, sorry, I'm enjoying some music. Is there a problem? And then the cops will be like, well, make sure it's shut down at a reasonable time. Yeah, 10 o'clock, I'll have it off, no problem right but it's just enough to be annoying enough that they eventually realize there's nothing they can do and that they fired shots first and now you're just going to finish it i encourage you to consider some of these ideas but maybe not do them uh, don't bother our friend mr kevin L 
Um, I'm not even sure. I don't think that's his real name. Who's got a, a name of I mean, how can a guy with so much hate in his heart have a last name of I think this is a fake name. He's only got 36 friends, so I'm not too worried about it. It was a fun time. I, I kind of miss that guy. It's been a little while since he's been gone now. because. But anyway, I hope these tips helped you out. Hey, thanks for watching all the way to the end of this video. We hope you enjoy the content in this video. and We'd love to have you come back. Consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. And for those subscribers who are looking for that extra special thing that you can do to support this channel, consider joining our members group. That's where we're building this community, the Gears and Tech community, where we can all enjoy content together. You'll get special perks, which we'd love for you to check out by clicking the link down below. For those of you who are just happy to watch the video, that's okay too. You can check out some of our other content right over here, where we've got some previous videos that have already been uploaded and enjoyed by many of our viewers already. We do hope to see you again. This has been Gears and Tech. Have a great day.